Would you believe that all the energy that you need to power your home is right in front of your eyes? Hi, I'm Rami. I'm a PhD student at Georgia Tech. I'm working with Teachable Moments to lead my own STEM outreach project. The photoelectrochemical cell consists of three main parts. The working electrode, which is a semiconductor, a reference electrode, which is usually made of platinum, and water, which acts as an electrolyte. The working and reference electrodes are connected together through a metal wire. When light falls on the working electrode, the electrons are excited and flow through the wire to the reference electrode, leaving behind positive charges named holes. The holes combine with oxygen ions and water forming oxygen gas. At the reference electrode, the electrons combine with hydrogen ions forming hydrogen gas. In order to understand the development of photoanodes, let's use the following analogy. Imagine Super Mario wants to jump from a lower brick to a higher brick in order to reach the castle. He tries to jump to the higher brick, but he couldn't. He tries again, but he still couldn't. So he summoned all his power and tries one more time, but the brick was too high for him. This is analogous to the first generation of photoanodes, in which the band gap was too large, and so it required very energetic photons to produce electrons. The second generation started by mixing materials together to reduce the overall band gap forming what's called straddle band gap semiconductor. This is analogous to having a temporary brick for Super Mario to transit on and then jump to the higher brick and reach the castle. Unfortunately, because the transit brick is temporary, there is a high chance for Super Mario to fall back to the lower brick. This is what happens in straddle band gap semiconductors in which the excited electrons fall back to the ground state and recombine with positive holes. The third generation is still based on mixing semiconductors together. However, this time it is based on what's called straggling band gap semiconductors. This allows for a better control of the band gap of semiconductors and better transfer of electrons. This is analogous to having a magic cloud that takes Super Mario directly to the castle.